Welcome, I'm your host, Christina Haskin, and tonight I have the pleasure of having Judy Kudlow. She is um, a co-founder of a group called Common Ground, and they're trying to make a difference in how the discourse in this country about political change is carried out. They're trying to get a more civil conversation going. So uh, I will tell you a little bit of her background. Um, Judy Kudlow is an artist and teacher. She's living in New York City and in Reading, Connecticut. Um, she began her career in public policy in Washington, D.C. as a business lobbyist, White House, commu White House communicator, staff, and press liaison at the Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission. She is married to economist and CNBC personality Larry Kudlow. She is president of the Harlem Studio of Art, LTD, in New York City, a nonprofit educational organization that she co-founded. So thank you for coming. Thank I'm, you for having me. I'm really curious about your group because um, a friend of mine told me about you and I wanted to find out more. What um, is Common Ground and what is your mission? Sort of in, you know, give us a general um, how it started and well first I want to thank you for inviting me to come and talk about something that I'm really excited about um, the common ground committee got started about a year and a half ago there were five of us who um, I think like a lot of Americans uh, began to feel at that time and probably still do that the tone of public discourse had gotten to a point that people were dissatisfied with it, it's certainly in terms of being able to discuss important public policy issues, um, even just with your neighbor. That seems like there were certain topics that were just off the table. You couldn't, you couldn't bring them up because people couldn't have a civil dialogue. And we thought that was a shame. And we weren't alone. There were other people who had, I think, similar ideas. But we decided that we needed to do something, at least starting in Fairfield County, where we're all from. I live in, in New York and, and in Reading, as you said, so I, I feel like I'm a part of the Fairfield County community. So we got together and talked about what we thought we could do. Now, these are other friends of yours, or did yes. you select them? No, we're just people who get together and talk about things. And um, that we all shared this same passion to try to make something better. And you, uh, I understand that you do programs, uh, have talks of, you invite guests who are of differing points of view. Can you tell us a little bit about the recent program? I know this is fairly new, but um, yes. um, how you, do that and how you invite the public to under to see this um, conversation well we decided that in order to have change sometimes the best thing to do is to lead by example so true yeah. you know we we've all watched these debates we watch them on talk shows we watch them on presidential debates and everyone comes armed with their talking points and their agenda and they're they're ready to do battle and that's fine that's one way to do it but we thought what if we had a debate but with a twist that the people that we would invite to engage in the debate and have different points of view would be um, charged with the mission of finding a point of common ground and that in fact their performance would be judged by not not how many points they scored not how many witty reposts they came up with but by coming across points of common ground that emerged and being willing to accept that that could be a point that they could agree with their adversary. Now, who does the judging? The audience, or do you have a panel of judges to judge the common groundness? Of <laughs> well, we we have this facilitating tool. So this is another thing that we add to our standard town hall kind of debate format. Um, we have a person named Kraft Bell, who's not on our committee, but he's very much affiliated with us, and he's an expert facilitator. He's worked for presidents and all sorts of people. And 
He has a tool that's an electronic tool. So you'd have a debate, much like you and I are sitting here talking, you'd have a moderator, but behind us would be this giant screen, <laughs> and in front of us would be a monitor. So the audience sees this big screen, and we're making our points, and ahead of time, and we, I should say now, we partner with the Christian Science Monitor, which is a very well-known, well-respected, Pulitzer Prizing daily international right. newspaper, which all of us on the committee have a great respect for and identify their, their kind of journalism as being helpful uh, in what we're trying to do. So we partner with them and their reporters help us in identifying the extremes of, of positions. So for example, at our first debate held at the Greenwich Coal Library Auditorium, and that was on the role of government in the nation's economy. So we had some economists come, well-known, nationally known uh, economists, come and debate that topic. So before the debate happens, the monitor staff and, and us worked out the extreme right position and the extreme left position as an answer to all these aspects of that tax policy, budget, all those things. And then in the middle is a, is a blank column, which is the common ground column. And uh, what we tell the audience and the debaters is that what we hope will happen during the course of the debate is Kraft Bell is sitting down here and he's going to be typing <laughs> while they speak. So and he's deciding what's a common and ground. And he's deciding. To... And if, if someone says something that he thinks sounds like a common ground point, He's going to type that in, and, and there it is. It's up on the screen. Now, I want to ask you, does the common ground come up in the beginning of a debate where you're saying, this is what we have in common? No. It's, so it's a giving ground as well as a common ground. It's, it's sort of. actually not that even, because yeah. the, a lot of my friends who are, have strong opinions about all these topics um, said, common ground, I don't know if I like the sound of that. That sounds like caving in on your principles. And I said, no, it's yeah. exactly not that. The idea is, every we believe people should have strong, principled opinions, and they should be advocates for those positions. But if your opponent comes up with an idea that you think actually you could embrace, don't just automatically, because it's not in your talking points and it's not right. on your agenda, just dismiss it. In our forum, we want you to say, well, all right, let's talk about that. And we've had that happen. It doesn't happen right away. And it doesn't happen on every issue. Some issues, there's no common ground, and you just move on. But if out of five topics of public policy, you could come up with one or two where we could identify a path forward for policymakers, we think that's progress. So it's not just about being civil and playing nice. It's about making progress. Well, and so a person who's come to a common ground point, do they acknowledge that they've, you know, realized it, or is it just a, you know, subjective thing that somebody's interpreting that they did not? Both, but they kind yeah. of get into it. That's what yeah. we, we, we so didn't know their, what would happen the first time. Is that their intention as they set out? Is that sort of a, an edict of what you say? If you come to this, you ha should be open to? They know. That's okay. the expectation. Right. So it's a different incentive. Yeah. You know? And it shows a different part of their, I would think, even if they're not a political figure, I mean, you said to me a little bit that um, you're trying not to get the, the politicians who are actually in office right now because it, they might be too concerned with their uh, specific, um, what they're being judged on too much. But, yes, um, they have a constituency that yeah. they need to answer to, and sometimes that limits how far they can go sometimes, you know, and it's not a bad thing, it's just a fact. Right. Yeah. But then the person um, who gets a new idea, I mean, are they, is there a movement there that you see as exciting? I mean, how does it come out off in a different way than usual television in that, or usual uh, discourse? Well, in, in the first debate, uh, in the, in the year, two economists who were debating were Steve Moore of the Wall Street Journal and Mark Zandi of Moody's. And um, if I had to characterize their positions, I'd say that Steve tends to be 
more of a, um, a conservative. He's, he comes from a position of, of um, sort of pro-business, pro-free market, uh, against big government, that standard sort of position. And Mark Zandi tends to be slightly more in favor of government programs and uh, more of a willingness to see government play a larger role in the economy. So those were the two. And so obviously one's going to be for more taxing, one's going to be for less taxing. Right. And so on the issue of tax policy, um, and these guys know each other. They know where they're coming from. But they got on one aspect of tax policy, and I believe what it was was uh, uh, talking about reducing the, um, the uh, Social Security tax. And they... I don't remember which one, but one of them was actually sort of surprised. You know, there was that, there was that element, because he said something, the, the other guy s said something about it, and I think it was Steve who said, well, you know, I, I can agree with that. And it's like, oh, <laughs> it's not a surprise. And they were willing to acknowledge that, and, and I, I, it was a position, they talked about it a little bit more and fleshed it out. Um, Later, maybe just a few weeks or days later, the Erskine Bowles Tax Commission came up with a very similar uh, solution to tax policy. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it was because of our debate, but it just shows that, that when people really try to find a solution and are willing to accept something that they hadn't really thought about before, um, that doesn't do damage to their their principles, um, they can embrace it. And I think that's what people want to see our leaders doing. I think also it's a it's sort of an opportunity for more self-discovery for the person with the opinion because um, they may have other friends and or political associates who all want to think together like a group think thing. <laughs> and so they kind of get stuck in, well, if I want to be loyal to my group, then I have to say the same thing, and I can't move on any positions. So I think this kind of exercise gives that person the freedom to sort of look at another side of something without, you know, feeling that they're betraying anybody because it's an experiment. That's, that's really what we're hoping, and what's been very gratifying is to see the attitudes of our participants. And these are people who are on television all the time. They're always, they're, this is their life. This is what they do. They're pundits. They debate. And I, I, I was curious about how they would receive this idea of it being maybe a little too idealistic, a little naive. Um, they all love it. We get great follow-up from our speakers afterwards about how much they like the idea of the process. And I think you told me that you have an interactive audience that people can... <laughs> yes. Um, how does that work by computer? They can... Yes. At the second... questions. The second debate in. was on China. And that the question was China threat or opportunity. So that one wasn't really politically left or right um, necessarily, so much as it was more um, free trade versus not free trade or... Um, really fear versus not fear for a variety of reasons. And that didn't really fall into neat political categories. So that made it kind of interesting. Um, and, and for this second one, that, that one on China, <coughs> we did have, um, even before the debate, we have a website, commongroundcommittee.org. Um, and we ran a blog and asked people to answer this question. And so we had a, a voting. Voting was going on before, during, and after the debate. And also, we ran a, a brand live video streamed during the event so people could ask questions. We had a Q&A session at the end. So people from anywhere in the world uh, could ask a question and um, participate in that way. That's great. I mean, I think there's a lot of frustration in the country about the stuckness of what's happening in Congress and everywhere. And so I think this is a real welcome thing for people because that, and even for the audience, I think uh, you're sort of showing the audience how to also open their own thinking 
because even, you know, we have Tea Party members and all these, some people really get stuck in, I, I went to a few things in the healthcare debate and there was some really terrible comments coming out that I had never seen in this country before. I mean, I was shocked at the behavior of people that I don't think in another context would have behaved that way. It just has reached such a pitch. So um, I think people realize this is dangerous and not really good for our country. So you're doing uh, something that's really, uh, I'm very impressed with it. <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate that. So um, what kind of, you had mentioned Christopher Shays, you, what kind of people do you look to be part of your panel or your uh, debate? They have to be very knowledgeable um, and adept at debating. Um, and as I said, not be too terribly tied to an agenda or a constituency, although almost by definition the people that we're looking for are going to be recognized as having a point of view. And that's fine, you know. Um, but we want pe these people to be thoughtful. And I mean, you know it when you see it. You know when there's somebody who, I've, I've seen it happen on television. Somebody actually agrees with them, but they don't expect it and they don't even hear it. They're just already attacking again. Oh, you know, you've seen yeah, this. Yeah. And um, so we're looking for the sort of person who's actually listening to the other person and, and trying to make a thoughtful response and not just score points and call names and, uh, and engage in that kind of behavior. Because it's just not helpful. You know, that's do, do you think that, I mean, do you think the media has had some um, influence in making people divisive because it's more interesting television. I mean, I, or, and that people, they, the perception I think, I think this might have be um, a factor is that it makes, they think that with the reality shows and stuff that people really want a fight of some kind or some kind of conflict or else it's not interesting. So um, I think, how do you turn that around, you know, not to say, like you said in the beginning, that people go, oh, well, everybody's just going to be nice and it's not going to be fun. Well, that is a factor. And um, there is, there's a reason why television is the way it is, and it's called ratings. <laughs> and unfortunately, we have met the enemy, and it is us. <laughs> and um, people seem to be voting for this kind of... Uh, hostility um, because that seems to be what they watch and so that's what the media gives them um, I mean I'm not I'm not saying the media doesn't have a role but, but it's so easy to just blame it on the media oh, yeah. Yeah. and so I, I, I don't say they're innocent but they're doing what their market research, research says to do but but you do honestly hear people say that they don't want that. No, no, I think they realize the danger now because they are. It's really solidified in nothing getting passed, nothing getting done. You well, know? we see that right now. I mean, yeah. this is and we're with the debt crisis now. It's yes, critical. and it's critical, and people can't seem to reach a common ground. And there, this is democracy. And it worries me, you know, as you said, what does this mean for our country? If, if we can't have spirited debate, but debate that moves us forward uh, towards solutions. And I just think we, we're not seeing that as much as we would hope to see. And, and the lack of civility, that, that, that is certainly there. And, and that's disturbed a lot of people. And, you know, there was, there was always that, that old um, quote from the Reagan years, that Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill were at each other's throats all day long. They disagreed about everything, and, there, and the stakes were just as high then as they are now, if not higher. But at the end of the day, they could go out and have a drink together. And they were friends. They honestly were. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that still happens on Capitol Hill today, but I don't think we see very much of that. And I, I'm, I'm hoping we can try to bring back a little bit more of that spirit of comedy. And I know there are people who want that in, in Washington. So who knows? Well, maybe we can show them the way. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, um, 
I think it's also the respect for the greater thing that has to be happening, the, the changes that have to be made, because yeah. we have such great challenges, and for the greater thing of the country, which now we've taken so much for granted that it's just always going to be the same. And now we're seeing it, it's, it can get into big trouble. So I think I looked up Common Ground for the founding fathers had in the beginning of the constitutional you know, preparing for the Constitution, all the different opinions they had, but they did come to a thing that they realized that forging a nation that was the kind of nation that we have today um, was more important than their agendas or their own self-interest and so forth, and so they went beyond and found that common ground. I mean, this is way back, but I think it's something that we can kind of I, and I think this is what you're doing, is kind of spread the word that this is the way to go and that this should be the trend and this should be the thing that's honored, not the fighting and that, that you know, that's where the, st the strength is not so much in fighting but in not agreeing, like you said, that each person can have their own view, but in really listening and really trying to solve the problems. And um, I almost think that people get caught in their what they said they were for, and they're kind of stuck in that, and they can't, they can't get out because they're afraid then that, oh, the image will change and everything's going to, and it, it's very rigid, you know? A little bit, and I find that history fascinating, um, that, that the phrase common ground was, was there at the very beginning, and um, I know that their fights were just I've heard you know people talk about how it wasn't all nice back then yeah. either <laughs> that they that they got pretty rowdy about it too but you know and and we like lively debate we want spirited debate we want people to be strong advocates but also to be good listeners and and that's we we were really happy to see how much even you know in the pressure you're there you're performing you're on stage and yet they could be thinking it through as it's happening to the point where they could, uh, the first one, we, we probably, I'd say we identified maybe three or four really good points of common ground. And, and just the, the whole tone of the debate was, um, it, it was just so friendly. You know, at yeah. one point, Mark Zandi got very excited about a point, and he, he kind of leaned across it. It was Crusades and Steve Moore and Mark, and he leaned across at, Steve, at Chris at one point and said, no, you're wrong. And, and then later he came back, he circled back to that, and he said, you know, Chris, I shouldn't have said that to you. I shouldn't have said you're wrong. I didn't really mean that. It was, it was really cute, you know, and it was, it was because this mattered. It was important that that, you know, fine, say you're wrong, but, but you need to back that up. And well, you know, what I'm thinking of the, you know, the common ground that Reagan and Khrushchev, I mean, Gor Gorbachev, uh, Gorbachev, sorry, Khrushchev, yeah. I think, um, how they came together, you know, in the 80s and changed the whole dynamic of, um, you know, the Cold War. And it wasn't just that, there was a lot of other influences, but I think that was one of his great achievements, Reagan, to have that kind of personality that could forge that kind of uh, energy between two leaders on such critical things. Actually, you know? I love that example because everyone knew what, uh, whether you agreed with him or not, he was a man who had strong uh, principles, strong views. And you're right, he saw this critical moment for the world. and. Tr looked, really seriously looked for points where he could um, put out his hand and, and, it, and it worked. And that's, that's, that's the model, that really is, yeah. And what do you, what's your next one going to be? <laughs> well, we the topic picked out. And it'll, how do you, uh, you have this on your website, do you publicize it in another way so people can come or can anybody come? Or anybody, it, please, please yeah. come and you'll, you'll be educated, you'll be entertained. And um, the next one, in fact, and, and you know, we have, I, I said we have a blog on our website. So if you have some ideas for what you'd like to see discussed, please tell us, because we're, we're looking right now. It's, you know, we're going to have it in October. So, and we, because and it's you have one topic per. One topic. Right. 
And um, it's hard right now to think, well, what will be on people's minds in October? But um, one of the things that we're looking at, there's a lot of topics that are controversial, immigration, health care, you name it. But one thing that strikes me right now is the sense that people have that our, our institutions aren't working. Our government can't, that our leaders aren't leading. Our, our, our government isn't working. We're, we're in this terrible debt crisis, the, the health care crisis, the Medicare crisis, all yeah. these problems. Well, everybody's scared. Everybody's scared. Yeah. The jobs are gone. Everybody's house is underwater. These are big problems. And uh, I think and then people. And there's climate change as well. <laughs> yes, right. Climate change. With and all the floods and all this is now. Yes, coming, the yeah. weather is yeah. even is, is, is scary. And I think, you know, people worry that, you know, is it the fault of our institutions? Is it the fault of the leaders themselves? Is it, is it, do we have the wrong people there? Are they just not doing it right? What is it? Why, why do we have an almost Jimmy Carter-like situation of malaise? Um, and what, can I ask you, what do you think that, do you think you can influence people to say, what can I do as a citizen in helping this kind of common ground thing? Or we would love that. Topic. Yeah. Yes, we'd like to become a verb. You know, let, so have somebody who's having a fight in their city council to right. say, well, let's common ground it. Right. Let's right. bring in a facilitator. Let's, let's go at this from the point of view of finding something. And, 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 and it's kind of united, United States, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. But um, before we go, I think that um, can people see these two have you got them televised somewhere or um, yes on, on the website, website on co go to common ground committee .org. on YouTube or just the website and yes. it's on YouTube and um, probably some other social networking but uh, that's out <laughs> of my league um, but if you go to the website you can see uh, the full-length video of both of our earlier sessions and then there's a shortened version too if you just want to get a flavor of it but I really invite people to to get involved in what we're doing. We, we'd love to have help. We'd love to have supporters. Um, it's, it's an all-volunteer operation. All of us have day jobs. And we, we just we do this because we love it. But uh, we'd love to have help. Well, I think it's a great thing you're doing and fascinating. And Thank something you. really, for the time, very, it's very needed right now. And I think it's going to make a big difference. And I would like, you know, if you want to come back and in a little while and give an update of how it's going, that would be I'd great. I'd love that. Um, and uh, we're almost running out of time. So um, I'm looking forward to the next, to seeing the next thing in October and uh, come back with other part, other members of your group. And Yes, I'd like to do that too. So thank you for coming. Thank and you very much. We'll see you next time. I mean, okay. <laughs> So check out Common Ground, the, we have the website at the end, and see what um, Judy's talking about and some of the programs they've done. And it might be fun to participate and kind of go along with this and see where it goes. And we'll get back to you and we hear more <laughs> next time she's on. Okay, good night. Thanks for watching.